Okay, new video type. First impressions. This is the first time ever. So if you want more first impressions videos, comment below. Let me know. Like the video. If you have any suggestions for how I should do them going forward, let me know. And then think about the opportunity for us to have some follow up videos after we beat the game. I do want to say that everything I'm about to say in this video can and will change if my experience changes. This is first impressions. This is not my final thoughts. Some games start out bad and get good. Some games start out bad. Or some some games start out good and turn ass. I don't think this is going to be one of those. I took my braces out for this, by the way. So Black Myth Wukong came out August 20th for the PC and the PS5. Xbox fans, they screwed y'all again. Y'all going to have to wait because of that series. S, my boys, I'm sorry. But it is coming out for Xbox. Hopefully, y'all get it sooner rather than later. Because I highly recommend this game. I want to say that in less than a minute for people who just wanted to know my opinion. For people that are on the fence, hopefully y'all sit down and listen to this video. I'm going to try to get y'all in and out of here in less than 15 minutes. And then you can decide whether or not you want to get the game. Watch somebody play it or wait for a price drop. So let's hop right into it. We just want to kind of go through a couple of elements of the game and then we'll go from there. Story-wise, that opening cutscene, guys. Woo-wee! That opening cutscene is one of the best opening um, segments I've seen on the game. And, 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 you know, and I'm talking like I love the God of War, the last two, 2018 and Ragnarok. My favorite, possibly favorite story intros ever. And then we have uh, Last of Us 2013, that, that prologue to get you into, you know, that the game. I, I'd never seen anything like that in a video game at the time. So this will get you hyped up. I'm just going to tell you right now, they don't even waste too much time. The voice acting is excellent. The story is immersive. And I'm sure there's some lore that maybe if you watch a YouTube video after you beat, beat the game or while you're playing it, you'll realize that the story is even better than you thought. That happens to me all the time, where I like a story, I end up watching a YouTube video about it where they kind of break it down, and then I realize that it's even better than I thought. This could possibly be one of those games, but the good thing about this game is it shines in the gameplay more than anything else. So you may not even be worried about the story. I mean, bro, we just played Elden Ring. Like, who, who cares? Like, as, as far as Elden Ring goes, I, I, I love story in games, obviously. But um, games like this, that have a good story also have the other elements of the game um as well let's play a drinking game every time i say game take a drink now performance we got to talk about it i have my game on performance mode let me say that first for somebody that come here try to correct somebody the lag in the frame rate is insane bro that that, that, that lag whoa the la what happens it happens mainly in combat mainly when there's a bunch of enemies on the screen be, maybe a boss called in a bunch of minions to help attack you or something like that. You're going to see the frame dip and you want to see it dip quite a lot. Um, and then what I mean by that is if you're on 60 frames, you're going to see it drop down to 30 or whatever. I don't know the exact number. This is not motherfucking digital foundry, but I'm saying you're going to see that lag. Um, and it doesn't happen constantly, but it does happen from time to time. As far as bugs and all that, I'm not the guy to ask about bugs because I get bugs on every single game. The only time I complain about the bugs is when they give me progression glitches where I can't continue or they throw my character through the ground or I lose shit, saves get deleted. I haven't experienced anything like that. I get little silly shit that like I get on every game where my character does a little root, like a weird funny animation, but I have not seen anything like that. The reason I'm even saying this is because they gave out basically all PC codes for review copies. And whenever you see that, it's a red flag, but... It, it was okay. So my PS5 copy is fine, but they got, they have to fix the frame rate so far. Um, but yeah, not giving out PS5, Switch codes, whatever platforms a game is coming out for, when they give you only limited platform codes, it usually says that the other platforms are having problems, but I, it was not too bad on here. Um, graphics. The graphics are good. They're solid. You want to see when there's a lot of foliage and stuff, it may not look as well as it does when there's snow and clouds and things like that but it does look good. Does it look like Hellblade? No. Does it look like Ration and Clank or uh, the Order 1886? It doesn't, but not uh, what games do look like that. The, but the, 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 the graphics are good. I would compare the graphics on here to what they have on Stellar Blade, um, which is, they're pretty good, especially in certain, um, you know, with the cutscenes, they look, they look really solid. Uh, so there's not too much to be said about the graphics. So we, we cover story, graphics, performance. The uh, the music's really good. There's even a funny guy who play, with no head who, who like sings songs to you in chapter two. You'll run into him. You'll know exactly who I'm talking about. The um, overall sound design seems to be pretty good as well. And uh, I definitely heard some songs I was playing. I'm like, yo, the soundtrack might be fire. 
Um, you know, I, I really like game soundtracks. You know, like Persona 5 is like one of my favorite soundtracks ever. So I really pay attention to stuff like that. So it's, this is pretty good. Um, and, you know, we got to give flowers to the Japanese developers, man. They, they, what they're doing is that they, they always have stayed creative and, and put together good stories and good mechanics on their games. And um, they haven't been as impacted by the changes in the industry as, you know, some of the games that they make in other parts of the world. So this is one of those games that maybe if you don't play Japanese games, this may introduce you to what you've been missing out on. Because I'm fairly new to the Japanese um, titles myself. I didn't really start playing those until 2017. So this game is really good, man. It, it is it is really fun. Um, gameplay. Okay, let's talk about the combat. Um and you know the stuff that i that i like first of all i do have to start off but there's no block button i kind of wish there was there is a parry skill or spell that you'll get that i have i have not used it yet because i just got it and i just stopped playing um for the day so i could do this this video right here so i have not been able to use that but i do wish there was a block button and there is not you guys if you don't dodge and perfect dodge you're gonna be in for a world of pain i'm just telling you right now shit is going to you're going to get fucked up okay if you don't dodge and parry or uh, dodge and perfect dodge, excuse me. Um, pretty standard stuff. You have your magic, you have your, your focus, but what they're doing is they're, they're giving me so many different new mechanics and different equipment and spells and special moves and all that stuff that I'm pretty, I'm only on chapter two, but like I'm already knowing as I get further into the game, I'll be able to start to put everything together and you might be able to string together some really nice combos, especially once you start reducing your cooldowns for your special moves and you start raising up your, your uh, you know, you have more magic or mana meters with the, they have mana on this game. Um, so, you know, I did see uh, the, the comparison to a Souls game. So I could talk a little bit about that. This is not a Souls game. I thought it was going to be, a lot of people did. The devs actually never said that. Think this is closer to a Devil May Cry Stellar Blade than it is a Souls game. They do have Souls elements in here, and a lot of people see that when you rest and enemies respawn, they immediately think it's a Souls game. This is not a Souls game, but it does have some of those elements, but this is more of a middle ground between your standard hack and slash adventure RPG in your Souls game. This will push you right in the middle. So for people who want to get into Souls, but you're a little scared because you, you don't want to go to work for four hours or go to school, college, and then come home and get your head bust by a boss for five hours, they're, they're worried about, do I want to do that? A game like this, Stellar Blade, and some of the other games that are more in the middle will possibly get you ready for those just to see if you even want to deal with that. They have varying levels of difficulty when it comes to the different enemy types on here. Your regular guys walking around are pretty pretty easy to beat. Um, but I'm gonna warn y'all about the archers. Okay, I don't want anybody to, you know, I don't want y'all like to whoop my ass. The archers, bro. I'm just telling you the archers, dude, take care of them quickly. If you don't, it's gonna get out of control. They're gonna shoot you all in your back while you're fighting the melee guys who are really a problem. And anybody knows when there's ranged attackers on games, I always rage, whether it's snipers, archers, or people with, with ma range magic. They're all bitches. Okay. The regular guys walking around aren't really a threat like that. Uh, there is some annoying ones, though. There's a guy who has, like, blue dreads and a shield, and he makes horse noises when he charges you. He's a bitch. He's not good. He's just annoying. Okay. That's all I ran into as far as annoyances so far. So let's talk about the optional bosses, the mini bosses, and um, the story bosses. Really well designed. Their attack patterns are... Um, predictable, but also unpredictable, which gives you a little bit of a challenge. But also, even when they're killing you, whole time you like you know you could do this, and that's that's how the that's how a good boss is designed, where you're challenged, but you feel like you're learning every attempt or every couple attempts. You're picking up on something. Sound cues definitely use those because sometimes they make sounds right before they do certain attacks, and it'll help you time the dodge because there is no block. Okay. Um, so, you know, there is a couple bosses on here. Like I said, there's varying levels of difficulty. I fought the tiger and the tiger. Just remember I said the tiger chapter two, he's going to put hands on you. And I ran into some, some optional sage, dude. I fought him for like 30 minutes. Then I just went ahead and turned the con swap. Cause I, I ain't got him to do. I played the game for like six hours a day. Yeah. He ain't going to ruin the rest of my day, but I'm going to pull up on that bitch tomorrow. I promise you that. I just ain't having for him today. So you have those and then you have. You know, the, the, the optional bosses that are 
kind of easy, a little bit tricky, but maybe it takes you two tries. Now, the game is going to be as hard as you make it. And that, by that, I mean the game is linear, but there's lots of opportunities for exploration, like lots. I've been on chapter two for four hours. I su I, I'm going to suggest y'all really check every nook and cranny or you're going to miss shit. They're constantly feeding you rewards on here, which is amazing. We love to play games where we're constantly uh, being rewarded, whether it's XP, whether it's little spirit summons because you ran into a, a normal enemy, but he was glowing blue and you kill him. And then now you can do his move to other people. You know what I mean? As a special little charge ability. So make sure y'all do those and explore, get all the XP. You get, you know, you get like super special moves and stuff like that. They're all over the place. You want to do that so that you get the most out of your character so that you are a proper level when you get to these bosses that I'm talking about. Because if not, you're gonna turn the boss that's a 20 minute boss into a two hour boss because you tried to run through the game. Not everybody wants to play 300 hours and have an Elden Ring experience, but you still wanna explore a little bit. So this gives you exactly that, the middle ground between linear and open world, which is basically, it is linear, because it's chapter based, so you play through the chapters. Uh, Trophy Hunters, by the way, you'll be happy to know that you can get this platinum in uh, one playthrough, and then maybe you do like two or three things in New Game Plus. You can also revisit anywhere that you've already already visited to get stuff that you missed post-game, which is good. You don't have to play the game five times. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, so yeah, so we, we talked about, so yeah, make sure you do all your exploration, or you, I'm telling you, you're gonna, dude, you're gonna be sorry that you didn't do that. I'm just telling you right now. Um, you can craft medicine, weapons, you can craft armor, and um, you want to need to do that. Uh, there are things and materials you can collect around the world, but you're not picking up loot every five seconds. And that some people are not into that. Some people are, which is good. So, um, you know, there's not a lot of that. And uh, really, you know, that's kind of like it. I think the game is really something special, uh, especially this year. If this would have came out last year, I don't think it would have got the praise that it could possibly get because 2023 was the most crazy year of gaming I've ever seen as far as the the sheer volume of good games. It was like over 20 good games in one year. We've never, we don't usually get that. You know what I mean? Like, like there was a lot. And we're talking about, we're talking about AAA indie, indie games. We're talking about games where they announce it and it's actually what you hoped it would be. You know what I mean? Because what we've been dealing with for the last few years is we they reveal a game like now and then it comes out in three years. And it's disappointing. Last year, I didn't really experience that too much. Like everything was hitting on what it was supposed to be as far as those. And then we had some surprise drops with like Half Hour Rush and, 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 and you know, Liza P and, you know what I mean? Smaller games like that. So, Black Myth, y'all got one. Um, I like the game, man. Let me know what y'all think about this video. If you have any suggestions for the format of this or any questions. Um, let me know. And I will suggest y'all might need some guides to find stuff on this game because some of these, the level design is a little bit like a maze and you will get lost trying to find shit to do, uh, like items for quests. Okay. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Peace.